Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Well, not necessarily Render Man, um, we're looking at my fluids today. So if you're keen on rendering out a candle flame, that's what we're looking at. We're gonna be using Maya fluids, which will work with other renderers as well. So if you're using a, another renderer, you can follow along. Um, it would just be some of the workflow at the rendering stage will be a little bit different. So if you looked at my last tutorial, I already showed how to set up the wax for that candle there. Um, I also created a wick, but I've created a new one for this particular tutorial. So if you want to follow along and do exactly as I do, you can end up with the sort of roughly the same result. So because we're going to be emitting a fluid, which will be our flame, off this wick, off this new wick here, um, you want to copy the scale of it. So the scale is on the x 0.068, on the y 0.371, and on the z 0.068. So uh, let's drop in a fluid container and start getting into our flame. So you need to make sure you're on the effects tab. We'll go to fluids and create 3D container. <clears throat> I'm just working with the default settings, so we'll apply and close, and we're going to move that up. And we're not gonna scale it, we're actually gonna to go to the attribute editor um, and we're gonna go up to the container properties under the fluid shape. And we'll probably make this about two by five by two. Um, it's probably a bit, bit long on the Y axis, two by four by two will probably be enough, yep. So we should end up with something big enough. All right, so basically what we're going to want to do is make sure that the wick is inside the container because the wick is going to be what's emitting our fluid. Uh, and I'm going to be saying fluid, I'm talking about the flame when I say fluid because we're using my fluids. Uh, we essentially use a fluid or liquid simulation to simulate a flame. So I'll be saying fluid, I'm talking about the candle flame. So to emit from an object, we'll just select the object, we'll select the emitter uh, we'll go up to fluids, add edit contents and emit from object. If you have a look at the ob uh, name, we can change the name. I think this is going to be WIC3 because this is the literal third time I've tried to record this tutorial. And we'll apply and close. So selecting our uh, emitter, we'll go to the fluid emitter tab first and we'll go to basic emitter attributes. Uh, so the fluid emitter itself, we don't want to have any rate. We don't want it to be emitting fluid because the, the container uh, isn't the part that's going to be emitting fluids, the wick is. So the wick here, you'll see it's got a rate percentage of 100%. Uh, if we change it to 1000, it's going to emit a lot really quickly. And that's what we want for a flame. If you were trying to simulate like slow moving water, you'd maybe want that to be a little bit less, uh, but we want to boost it right up. Going back over to the fluid shape tab now, um, if I just run this, so every time we want to see what happens to the simulation, we have to play through the timeline. So as you can see, it's sort of having this geyser effect at the moment, it's hitting the top of the container, and then it's coming back down, uh, which is fine. Which is, while it looks fun, it's not exactly a um, flame, but we'll get there in a second. So our contents methods, these are the types of uh, attributes that are driving the way that the fluid is being simulated. So we want density and velocity uh, to be on a dynamic grid. We also want temperature to be on a dynamic grid, fuel to be off, and everything else to stay as is. Uh, we're going to increase the damp to like 1 point, uh, 0.15. That's just going to help the overall shape a little bit. If you want to um, see what the difference is, um, once we've gone through the tutorial, I just recommend turning it down to see what the difference is so you can get an idea. Next, we're going to scroll down to the contents details so that's these are the um uh, the uh, the attributes for the density the velocity and the temperature so for the density uh we're going to keep it at 0.5 for now uh the buoyancy will set to one that's fine uh dissipation will set to two and i'll show you what that looks like so as before it's having that geyser effect but as it sort of gets towards the top it starts to dissipate and uh so now you can see how that would start to look a little bit more like a uh, candle wood um, otherwise, we're going to increase the... Uh, actually, for the moment, we'll leave everything else as is, and we'll just move on to the temperature. We'll come back and have a look at those other settings while it's simulating so you can get an idea of what they're doing. So uh, next under temperature, we'll keep the scale at 1.0. Um, the buoyancy, we'll set this to... Uh, we'll set it really high. Let's set it to 100. So um, you can see that now, because it's got more buoyancy, it's lifting up to the top of the uh, container as if it were more buoyant. 
Uh, we'll turn the dissipation up as well to say like three and we'll keep the diffusion at 0.1 and the uh, turbulence will turn off because we're not going to be working as a simulation for this. So uh, we're not going to be working as an animation for this. It's just going to be a still shot in the end. If you do want to add some sort of flicker to it, you can add a bit of noise and a bit of turbulence. Uh, work in very small increments like 0.01 as a starter and then just move up from there. Next we've got the shading lobe. Uh, this will basically determine how um, opaque our object is. So as you can see, the more you go towards black, the more um, opaque the um, density is. And then we've also got edge drop off. So as you increase that, you can see that the edge sort of gets um, gradiated away. At the moment, it's dropping off in a cuboid shape. We want to change that to be a spherical. So now that when it um, drops away, it will have a spherical arc to the top and the bottom. Uh, we'll increase that to 0.35 for now, and that should be fine. Uh, we're going to use this color lobe here for density, and we're going to use a gradient from black to white or almost white and not quite black and that's just so we don't get any of the extremes of the uh, that opacity uh, that color um, and we're going to increase the input bias as well um, I've done this a few times so um, Let's increase that 2.3 for the moment. I might have to change that once we get moving into this. You'll understand what that means in a moment though. But basically um, it, it's biasing between this black and this white, so sort of the opacity of it. Uh, next we'll look at incandescence. So this is the overall color uh, that's gonna be driving our candle. The first thing we wanna make sure is that it's set to temperature. The next thing we're gonna do is open up the uh, gradient here. Um, we're just gonna drop in a couple of colors for now. So we wanna keep this black color. This is gonna be sort of any area that's not um, uh, that's basically transparent. Then we're going to make this orange color. We'll change that to be red, and then we'll just chuck an orange in the center there, and then that yellow. I think a little bit later on I'll put a blue in as well, so that where the where the candle is um. Uh, got that blue gas light uh, near the wick. Now the input bias on this, as I slide it, you'll see just barely on the um, viewport if I push it all the way. Basically what it's doing is it's biasing uh, its color towards the right hand side of that gradient. So you can see if I go the opposite direction, it's gonna be very black. And this will become more obvious once we start rendering it. Uh, but I think a good starting point is gonna be about 0.78. And then we're gonna have a look at the um, opacity and the opacity is driven in the same way with an input bias so 0.25 I believe is going to work for this one we're going to set up a um, sort of a taper so that we don't just get one solid um, linear transparency it's got um, a more opaque color and then a less opaque color at the end so if I run an IPR now, we're getting something that's flame-esque. Um, you know, not totally realistic, but you can tell that we're on the right track. Uh, and also I just realized that I've got my wick set to not render. So I'll just go back into that um, render stats for that. We'll turn all the visibilities back on. Um, if I want to use my other wick that I created in the previous video, I can still use this as an emitter. I just turn the visibility off. Um, so now when I render that, we should be able to see it. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, not, not the, the worst looking thing. It looks a little bit more like a spear at the moment than it looks like a candle, but, um, if, you know, in a pinch, that's not the worst um, the not worst thing. It, it mostly had a guess just on my part. So we're getting there. So let's refine the shape so we get it to look more like a candle. So the top part's not looking too bad. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'd like this bottom part to tape in to be more spherical though. So it sort of um, cuts in towards the wick here at the bottom. So um, I'm just gonna make sure that that sim is running correctly. So we'll just resim that. So um, every now and then make sure you replay through that because when you're editing any of the contents details, it will need to be updated in the sim. So um, one thing that will make this easier to see, you can see in the viewport here, it's quite difficult to see. If we go to the surface lobe and turn it to surface render, you'll see that you get this thing here, which um, isn't actually doing an amazing job of what I was hoping it would be doing. Uh, it normally looks a lot better than that, but 
Uh, you can sort of see what's happening at the very least with our render. Um, I'm going to keep that playing and I'll turn off the film gate. So you can see what some of these settings are doing now. If I increase the uh, density scale, you can see that the density overall becomes a lot larger. So if I IPR that now, you can see the difference. Uh, we're going to keep it at about, about 0.65, I think. I want it to be a little bit larger, but um, not obscene. So if we increase the density tension, uh, that's going to create a um, sort of an, a tension around the outside of our, um, sort of like, think of it like surface tension in water. So if, if you could increase that, um, it's sort of like wrapping it in glad wrap, that's slowly getting more and more strong. So the more you increase it, the more it's going to pull it towards its emitter. And the less you increase, uh, the the lower you have it, the you know the the softer or less apparent it's going to be. So let's turn that up to um, say point, not too much. Point six, and um, then we'll work on the force a little bit. Sort of one point five. All right, and then uh, we can IPR that again. You can see the change in shape. All right, so it's getting a little bit more uh, gradiated overall. Uh, it's a little bit softer at the bottom side there. Uh, let's move to the temperature now and see if we can get that to look a little bit more uh, round as well. So just keeping that running, um, we'll increase the pressure a little bit. And if we're happy with that dissipation, which um, we can't see without with the surface shading on, it makes it difficult to see, so we'll just keep that at three. Uh, Diffusion, let's see if we can increase that just a touch and then I'll see if that renders a little bit different. Yeah, so it's softened it down again. It's getting possibly a little bit short, but um, we'll keep rolling with that for now. Uh, turbulence, we want to keep that at zero and actually I might increase that to 0 0.2 and see how that runs. Uh, now it's worth noting that um, if you're, if you're uh, doing an IPR at the same time as trying to sim it, uh, your computer will not simulate it correctly so you need to stop that and then re-sim it, uh, re-IPR it. All right, so it's gotten a bit squat now. Um, so I can increase like the buoyancy or decrease the tension to get that to be a bit bigger, but it's sort of getting that overall shape that I wanted. Um, okay, yeah, that's sort of rounded out nicely. Um, I could probably go with a bit more dissipation On both sides. All right, let's see how that looks. Now yeah, that's starting to look a little bit more candleless. It's a, it's a little bit fat, but um, I'm not going to get stuck in the weeds. Um, you can play with this to your heart's content. This is sort of more to get you started rather than to get you all the way to the finish line because that would be cheating, wouldn't it? Uh, let's have a look at the opacity, see if we can move things around here to get it to look a little bit more realistic. So if I increase that there at the bottom, we'll get a little bit more of that yellow. So that's cool. Uh, which is rounding up the bottom shape as well. Uh, I would actually like to add some blue in. So we'll add another node there and we'll give it a sort of neon sky blue sort of thing. Use your own art direction, decide how much of that blue you want. Try and keep it subtle though. And then if you um, if you want to change that input bias as well, you can sort of start to see a bit more of the smoke. I don't really like seeing the smoke too much. Um, I do like getting a little bit of the glow on it though, so you can use that. And then you can change the input bias on the um, temperature as well, which has the effect of increasing the size, but also has the, the effect of spreading the color over a smaller area, which is why it also increases or decreases the size. So get it to a size that you're sort of happy with. I think I like that 0.78. Yeah, something like that. It's probably probably getting a bit intense with the size of that wick. Just imagine someone sprayed some gas on it. <laughs> All right, so it's pretty much looking like a candle now. Um, so really what you'd want to be doing now is sort of working with your color gradients. If, see if you like, you know, obviously I've stylized this quite a lot. and your Candles don't really look like this. They look a lot more hot white. Um, we can do one more thing though. Um, if you wanted to drop in, say, a sphere light 
This might just punch up the shot a little bit, so we'll chuck that there. And we'll make this color a peachy color. Quite like the peach color. I use it in a lot of things. Underutilized color. All right, and then if we make sure that visibility is set to off, which it is, we're in an IPR now. And maybe increase that to 20. Whoops, you'll notice one thing is that because of where it is, it's actually blocking the um, it's actually blocking the volume. So we may need to move that up a touch. Something like that. And then if we turn down this other light, well actually let's turn that other light off. Something like that. So you get a little bit more of a romantic sort of scene here, something that you might like to sit down beside, woo your partner with a glass of wine and marvel at your splendorous my scene in which you've set up with this somewhat cartoony looking flame um, i'll leave you to go in and fix that though um, i hope hopefully that's gotten you far enough along that you sort of get an idea of what, what all the what all the controls do um, and then you can have your sort of flame happening there as it is like if you look at the sim um, it's flickering a little bit so it will look a little bit like a flame um, you might want to turn down the pressure a little bit so i can move a bit more you could probably increase the turbulence as well uh, but you're going to get yourself pretty close with something like that anyway so yeah that's um that's pretty much all there is to it though i hope you've enjoyed this one um, combining this one with the previous tutorial is highly recommended to get you uh, that tr uh, that subsurface scattering on that candle so you can get a little bit more effective um, I'm no VFX expert, but if you do want to ask me any questions on creating this candle, I will be happy to answer to the best of my ability. If you like the tutorial, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials every week for CG products like Renderman and Maya um, and other things as well. If you want to stay up to date further, make sure you check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.